Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 65, we'll take a look at the distributed strategy of enterprise architecture. In lesson 62, we saw that strategies describe the overall enterprise architecture team structure, whether it's centralized or distributed, and how standards, whether those be technology, architecture, methodology, or process related, are applied and governed across the enterprise. And we saw that there were four basic kinds of strategies. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the first decentralized strategy, which is called the distributed strategy. The distributed strategy here is where decisions and standards are delegated to the individual business units with minimally shared enterprise standards. Now, notice here, kind of in the diagram, that those enterprise standards, how minimal, very minimal, are actually then spread across those business units. Let's see an example of this, because what the enterprise architects in the central organization do is define, they define minimally shared standards. Now, all business units, regardless of their autonomy, must adhere to those enterprise architecture standards. However, watch this, each business unit is free to define whatever standards they like irrespective of other business units or even the central organization. So suppose you're wondering what would be good enterprise standards and what I would encourage you to do is to hit pause on the video right now and think for a little bit about what those enterprise standards that are minimally shared would probably look like. What would be good standards? And so go ahead and hit pause and then I'm going to continue Basically, the, a good example of those enterprise standards that are minimally shared are those things that the business units really don't want to worry about. And the core things, if you came up with these by hitting pause, you might have, first are security. Security is a good centrally defined kind of standard across the entire enterprise. Also, um, hardware and network type of concerns. Um, each business unit, I'm guessing, does not care what load balancers it's using or even which kind of hardware they sit on. And you know, databases might also be a good way of adhering to an enterprise-wide standard just for integration or the sharing of information. But notice each business unit here can define whatever they want to. Each department, in this case, is all Windows.net with a splash of Lean and Agile. We have another one that's Java Spring Angular, and we've got another department that's sticking with IBM with AIX using an SDLC waterfall approach. Hmm, not sure about them, but, <laughs> but you can see each department has its own flexibility and its own freedom. As a matter of fact, if we look at the advantages and also disadvantages of this approach, well, let's analyze those. But before we do, what we really have here with the distributed strategy are layers of standards. In other words, there are those core standards, those enterprise level standards that are minimally shared that every business unit needs to adhere to. And generally, again, like we saw the examples of security, maybe documentation, it could be uh, topology and the network, uh, hardware, these sort of things. However, business units might have commonly shared standards between them. If two business units have very similar technologies, now we can support common standards across those business units that relate to one another. But then, primarily, each business unit has its own distinct standards. Now, what would typically happen on the decentralized model is that each business unit would have an enterprise architecture team that would then define, implement, and then govern those particular standards. So let's look at the trade-offs of the distributed strategy. First of all, the good aspects. It's definitely the right tools for the job because now each business unit, although we have to adhere to some common standards, each business unit has the choice of whatever works for them. There's no kind of central governing body dictating what they need to use. So this gives us a lot of good business unit control. 
You know, the thing is that we have minimally global standards available here and better overall satisfaction, both by users, because we can respond faster to those kind of user requests, but also with NIT, because now each business unit has specific technologies, specific architecture, maybe methodologies, and also processes that work for their particular context. This, everybody, seems like nirvana, doesn't it? This seems perfect. However, there are some negatives with this approach. The first with the distributed strategy is a lack of synchronization between the business units. You see, those enterprise standards are minimally defined. So each business unit can choose whatever platforms, technologies, architecture standards, methodologies, whatever they want to do. However, um, this strategy is best suited for those kind of business units that are fully autonomous that the company does not need synchronization between those business units. For example, maybe one business unit happens to be trucking or transportation. Another business unit happens to be a pie shop. Another business unit does trading, all within the same company due to a level of diversification because our employees really like pie. And it got really expensive. And so the company decided instead of buying pies, we're going to buy the pie company. And so now this company, one of the business units, happens to manufacture or create or bake pies. <laughs> and it's a totally different type of technology. And furthermore, we don't need the synchronization. So the point is here, the lack of synchronization between business units is one of the use cases for the distributed strategy. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to see a type of decentralized strategy that does support that level of synchronization between the business units. The other disadvantage is that there's very high cost associated with this particular strategy because each business unit is now deciding whatever they want to. And because of that very high cost, it's also very, very difficult to control those costs across the company. We can't standardize on licensing and get licensing discounts because each business unit is doing their own thing. As a matter of fact, that lack of synchronization causes different business units not to necessarily agree to get those economies of scale on particular types of licensing and stuff. And finally, those enterprise standards that are minimally shared are extremely hard to govern. And what also happens in this kind of negative right here is that those enterprise standards, because of that, start to go overboard. In other words, let's standardize on security and hardware. I like that because now the costs are mm, somewhat easier uh, able to control. That works. I know. Let's standardize on the platform as well because now we can kind of control things a little bit more. As a matter of fact, I know. Let's standardize on the programming languages. Let's standardize on the way we document and diagram our architecture. Let's standardize on the methodology that we use. And you can suddenly see that this distributed strategy, because of those EA standards, those enterprise architecture standards that are minimally shared, or those minimal standards that are shared, it's easy to go overboard on those and turn this back into a prescriptive or classic approach. So for more information, you can go to Lesson 62, which kind of introduces all these enterprise architecture strategies and kind of the point of those strategies. Also, as a comparison, Lesson 63 and 64 with the classic alternatives. Kind of go back and review that to compare it against the distributed architecture strategy. Also, all of these Lessons are available in Software Architecture Monday, which is on my website, developer2architect.com. I also offer private training classes in software architecture, microservices, and analyzing software architecture. And you can find me at a lot of conferences, online training, and also public training by going to the upcoming events portion of my website. So this has been Lesson 65, The Distributed Strategy of Enterprise Architecture. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Stay tuned. we got two more lessons in Enterprise Architecture Strategies. Lesson 66, which will be next, we'll look at the last one of these strategies, which is the Durable Interface. And then in Lesson 67, we're going to wrap everything up and take a look at some case studies applying these so that we as a kind of as a group, I would say, um, can interactively decide what is the best strategy based on certain case studies. Thank you very much for listening.